Hello, my name is Emily Gravett and I am the author and illustrator of this book here called The Odd Egg. And I have recently made a video which you can find on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram of me reading The Odd Egg with my little dog called Dillis. But today what we are going to do is I am going to teach you how to draw the duck from Odd Egg. And because it's Easter, I thought we'd have a bit of fun today and we would also have a drawing competition. And I'm going to tell you more about that at the end of this video. So let's start. So we're going to need a few things. We are going to need a pencil. Any old pencil will do. And if you make a lot of mistakes like I do, also it's very good to have a rubber. I like to use paint when I do my drawings, so it's quite a good idea to have a couple of paint brushes and some paints. These are my paints. You can see they're in a sort of palette, but you can use whatever kind of paints you want. My ones come in tubes like this, but quite a lot of paints come in blocks and they all work just about the same if you don't have any paints, you could use felt tip pens, you could use crayons, you can use anything you want. So if we've got all of those things, we're going to start. So think about dividing your page sort of in half, because we're going. To, this is a kind of drawing of two halves. We're going to have the duck on one side and the egg on the other. And that's very important that you leave enough room for the egg. And I'll tell you why in a minute. So we're going to start off with the duck now. We're going to start with a body and he's going to have a sort of an oblong shape that just gets a little bit fatter towards the bottom like this. How are we doing? A sort of oblong with a rounded top and a rounded bottom. Brilliant. And then we're going to do his neck. Now, my duck has a very long neck. And he's going to be looking over towards his egg. So all that is really is a long line with a sort of round top like this. You see the round top on the end? How are we doing? Now, if I'm going too fast for you at any point, all you have to do is just pause the video and catch up or go back a stage, whatever you need to do to keep going. Now, his beak. I'm going to do quite a long beak and it's just a triangle shape on the front of his face. Easy peasy I hear you say. Now we're going to have this duck stood so we're going to have legs. He's got very skinny long legs. He's going to have one there and then a sort of little triangle along the bottom like this. I think he's excited. He's going to have one leg sticking out to the front, but you can make your stick out any way you want. I think I've said this before, but all drawings look a bit different. And that's OK, because we all look a bit different too. See, I'm doing a sort of triangle, little web feet like that. How's everybody doing? Keeping up? Now, his tail is sort of going to come out in this area here. And this is just like a little sort of little tufty thing like that. I'm going to make his back go a bit smoother down towards him. I don't like the way it was looking. So it's more like a big long triangle really. What do you think? See I've got lots of little lines. The thing you don't have to worry about when drawing is that your drawings never really are going to look good until the end. So you shouldn't worry if while you're drawing them you think oh this isn't going well. Because drawings are great. You can change them all the way through. He's going to have a wing down by his side here and all that's going to be is like that. Easy peasy. And I think we'll do a wing coming out the front and that's just a similar one but just coming out the front like that. I'm going to rub out some of these little lines here. We don't need them. And the one between his neck there. There we go. I'm going to blow this away. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not. I'm going to go. Right. There we go. We have got 
one outline of a duck. So I'm going to put some shading on the duck. So I use a colour that's a bit like... Another good tip is when you're testing out what colour paint you're using, sometimes it's good just to have a little scrap of paper like that. So I need to get a little bit of paint to make some shade and it can be a blue or a grey. So a bit of black that's really watered down. That'll do. And I'm going to sort of shade because that wing is sort of behind his body. I'm just going to shade that wing a bit darker and I'm going to shade underneath because the sun's not quite hitting. Well, that's a bit dark, you see, so I'm going to water that down a bit more. That's better. Just under his wing there as well. Maybe around his neck it makes him look a little bit more solid, a little bit more 3D. So we can see we made him. Another thing that will make him look better is if he looks like he's standing on the ground. So we're going to put a shadow underneath him here. I'll do this a bit darker, it doesn't matter. I'm going to put a shadow. And I might actually extend that shadow just in a straight line along there because when we draw the egg on this side of the page, that needs to sit on something as well. Okay, so how are we doing? Pretty good, I think. I'm going to swap to a slightly smaller brush. And I'm going to mix up a bit of green. I've got some green in my palette. I'm going to test it out. Is that a sort of duck colour? Mm, yes, I think it's okay. So with that green, I'm just going to fill in the whole of his head. And almost down to where his shoulder is. Like that. I'll add a bit more green. It's a bit dull, isn't it? Just like that. I might put a tiny touch on his wings, just to add a bit of colour, maybe on his tail. How are you doing? We've got that. And then some brown, I think. I think that will do. I think that will do. You can mix two colours together if you haven't got the right shade, but don't ask me which ones you have to mix together. I'm not very good at colour. I'm going to do that on the front of his tummy. So he's got a little sort of brown patch on his chest. Oh. Oh, there's something missing here. I think he needs some very strong yellow feet and a beak. Let's have a look. You make the paint slightly less watery, it comes out a much stronger colour. Oh, I have to concentrate on that bit. I don't have a very steady hand. There we go. Nice yellow beak. Should we give him nice yellow feet as well? And yellow legs. This is where I felt it would probably be easier. I think I just want his beak a little bit more orange. Now I do know if you mix a bit of yellow and then you mix a tiny bit of red into it. I'll show you. So I've got a bit of yellow from there. And then, it's hard to look through the camera, get a tiny bit of red, mix it in. See how it goes very orange? Let's see what that's like. I just want a tiny touch on his beak at the end. And maybe on his legs as well. Maybe down the lines at the edge. What do you think? that work? That doesn't look too bad. Then I'm going to swap back to a pencil. This is a black pencil. But actually, it doesn't really matter. You can just use the same pencil. I'm just going to put a tiny dot for his eye and a little eyebrow. And I'm going to make all the lines that I've already done a little bit darker. Like that. It doesn't matter if you get double lines, because that makes it look a little bit like it's moving a little bit. It gives it a little bit more personality. He's got a smile. I wonder what he's smiling at. I think we know, don't we? I think he's discovered an egg. And talking of the egg. Wow. So we're going to move in a line, a straight line. You could use a ruler or the edge of a piece of paper just to mark where your bottom of your egg is. Because you don't want it to go below because he's standing on the floor. So put a mark where the bottom of your egg is going to go. And maybe I'm going to have the egg about this big. Now, this is a bit complicated. You might end up with a wonky egg, and I probably will, but you're going to have a sort of 
big fat bottom on the egg like that. That's the easiest way to do it, I think, is just start off with a big curve and then it needs to go slightly inwards up to the top and then round and it needs to meet the other side like that. How is yours looking? Doesn't matter if it's completely accurate. And then I'm going to, using my shading grey again, I'm going to do a bit more shading on the bottom like this. Okay, so we've got the egg and he's sat on the floor. Now, we have a duck and an odd egg. Now, in my book, this is what the odd egg looks like. It looks sort of white with green spots, but don't put green spots on your egg yet because this is where the competition happens. So, what I want from you is I want you to use your imaginations and I want you to decorate your odd egg any way that you want. You could have spots, you could have stripes, you could stick glitter on it, you could stick sweet wrappers on it, you could crack it open, rub out the top and have a monster coming out of your egg. You can have anything at all happening with your egg. So I want you to do that and then when you're done, I want you to take a photo of your odd egg. And if you're watching this on Facebook, I want you to take the photo and put it in the thread below with your name, your age, and the hashtag odd Easter egg. And then post it on Facebook. If you're watching it on Instagram, the same. I want you to put it on your Instagram with your name, your age, and hashtag odd Easter egg. And then I will look at all of your beautiful eggs, all your odd eggs. And on Easter Monday at 11 o'clock a.m. UK time, I will choose the winner. And the winner will win this drawing and I will post it to you from home. So that's what we're going to do. Good luck, everybody.